Building a website isn't as hard as you think it is. However, if you just dive straight in, you can make an absolute ton of mistakes that do make your website building and your whole website using journey much harder than it needs to be. Today, I'm gonna to make your website building journey so much smoother by showing you seven mistakes that I see made over and over again by beginner website builders. I'm gonna break them all down. They're not in any particular order. I'll timestamp them all below. and We can get straight into it with tip number one, which is probably the most important one. I just said no order, but one is the most important one. Let's just go with it. So number one, the most important one, and probably the most obvious one as well, is to make sure that you pick the correct platform. There are tons of website builders out there, website building platforms that you can possibly use, and an awful lot of them are promoting this idea that you can use them for free to build a website incredibly easily. However, there's usually some stuff hidden underneath the surface when you start to look at that. And it's usually a massive amount of limitations on what you can actually achieve with that particular website builder, usually in design terms. You can't generate exactly what you're imagining. You're very limited by their templates. And while they might say that they're free and they may be to start with, as your website grows or as you want to add extra features, there is a cost involved and that cost can grow incredibly quickly. So all of this means that I 100% recommend just going straight in with wordpress.org. The platform itself is free and all you need to get hold of is hosting and a domain name. And you get both of those for around $30 for the year. There's then no additional costs around that and you have full flexibility to build a website that is the best that you can imagine and of course, as good as your skill level will allow it to be but with the mass amount of plugins and the open source nature of WordPress, there is basically nothing you can't achieve. If you do wanna start with WordPress, which if you're watching this video, you should absolutely start with wordpress.org, then you need to head down into the top in common and in the description if you want to check out places where you can get a domain name and also hosting. There's a whole range of options. At the moment, I'm using Bluehost, but you can go Bluehost, SiteGround, Hostinger, a lot of great options out there at the moment, and I will link some down below. Nice and cheap, very reliable, endless possibilities, wordpress.org, go for it. Next up, you might be brand new to building a website or you might be building a new website, might be your second or third, and you still want a few extra tips. Well, while you're building, don't have a live website because people are gonna be able to come and visit that website and see it and it could potentially just be the website equivalent of a construction site. Links aren't gonna work, the experience is going to be bad and people won't come back if that's the case. So of course you could just not have your site live during that time, but the best way to do this is to have a coming soon page. So you can have a page that when people try and go to your domain simply shows up with coming soon, but then we can layer on top of that. We can have coming soon, it can look very professional, and we can add a countdown. We can add a date and time when your website is going to be available. This is gonna build some anticipation. This works whether you're a business, whether you're a blogger, doesn't matter at all. Let's build anticipation for our website and when it's coming. Then I think the most important thing that you can do with coming soon pages is you can start to build an email list. You can put a box in there, you could put something in there that allows people to enter their email so that when your site is live, you can send out a big email blast to all of these people to say, hey, my site is now live, come and check it out. Drive that traffic back 
and you've started to build yourself an email list that you can then use for future purposes. For example, you could use constant contact with your email list to send out regular emails to people who are coming to your site, get in contact with them, start working with the people who are viewing your site, give them exactly what they want. An email list can be very, very useful, and this is a great way to start building one simply while you're building your website. The best way to build this coming soon page, I don't know why I did this. The coming soon page is not, you know what? The coming soon page is gonna appear here. I'm going to make it appear here while I'm editing. I find the best way to build that coming soon page is to use SeedProd. There's a couple of reasons for this. One being you've got a really great drag and drop builder which allows you to customize your coming soon page. And if you are a beginner building a website, you maybe don't wanna spend a ton of time also creating a coming soon page. SeedProd has tons of templates that you can just customize to suit your brand, suit your company, suit your blog, and you can put them up really, really quickly. So check out SeedProd if you do wanna build yourself a really effective coming soon page. Number three, you wanna optimize for SEO. Now you might have chosen WordPress because you got told it was incredibly SEO friendly. And that's actually true. However, it's not enough to just rely on the fact that WordPress as a platform is SEO friendly. What you wanna do is you want to build on top of that. And the easiest way to do it is with a plugin. You wanna go ahead and check out all-in-one SEO, in my opinion. You can search for it in the plugins repository under AIO SEO, and it is the original SEO plugin for WordPress, and it's still going for very good reason. So don't rely on WordPress alone. Go and check out all-in-one SEO and give your website a boost. We're gonna use number four to link to number three. So number three is all about SEO, driving traffic to your website. However, once the traffic gets there, you need to know information, you need data, you need analytics, you know, need to know where that traffic came from. You need to know who is visiting your site, how long they're visiting your site for, what search terms they're using to find your site, what is popular on your website. And the reason you need to know this is not just because it's quite interesting, but also it's gonna help you make decisions to grow your website further. If you know why people are visiting and what people are looking for, you can continue to create more content like that. If there's a particular product that you know people are finding, then you want to continue to allow people to find that and maybe make similar products. Your analytics are really going to drive the direction of your website for any purpose. Your blog, your e-commerce, anything at all is going to be driven by analytics. So I would say one of the first things you need to do is get your WordPress page, get onto the admin dashboard, and get yourself connected to Google Analytics. Now, Google Analytics can be a bit intense, uh, particularly if you're a beginner, a little bit complicated and difficult to use. So my advice would be to check out Monster Insights. Monster Insights connects with Google Analytics, and that's gonna allow you to get all of that wonderful data, but condensed down and presented in a way that you're gonna be able to understand and use. So for number four, get your analytics, use them to make decisions. You wanna check out Monster Insights to do that. I just said there, the first thing you should do is to get your analytics in place, but I might have changed my mind now that we've reached this step. And quite simply, because this step is about getting security. There's two ways that I want to present this to you. One is to get a security plugin. WordPress as a whole is pretty secure, but you want to make sure that you are good to go. All security elements are covered. You don't need to be putting yourself in any potential danger by just not having 
a security plugin. Something to consider is that if you are looking at multiple security plugins, don't use multiple security plugins. They're even likely to interrupt and get in the way of each other. Just pick one and go with it. Security, for example, is a great one to check out, but whichever security plugin you want to go with, use that and just stick with that one plugin. You also wanna make sure that you have a backup of your website and a regular or recent backup of your website should the worst happen. You don't wanna lose absolutely everything and then have to build from scratch. So make sure you've got yourself a backup and make sure that backup is stored somewhere safe, maybe on your desktop, maybe in your Google Drive would be better. Some kind of cloud-based service that you are using. You can use a tool like Duplicator, which is gonna be free. It's gonna allow you to create a full backup of your website. And it just means that should anything go wrong, you're safe and you're covered. Number six, I am talking to you if you are a blogger. So if you're a blogger, come close. If you are not a blogger, there's a timestamp down below. You can head across to the final point, point number seven. But bloggers, you and me, I have specific tips for you here and I have three of them. Number one is a mistake that I have made and I used to make an awful lot which is writing and editing simultaneously. The tip is don't do it. You don't wanna be writing a paragraph or a line and then going back and checking it. You don't wanna be going back and researching it and finding a link for the element at that point. Just write. Get it out of your brain, through your fingertips, onto the screen. It's going to be a lot more efficient and you're actually going to get stuff done. If you end up stuck on one paragraph, editing and researching, going back and forwards, you might not ever get that particular blog article finished. So just write it, then go back through and do the editing later. Tip number two is to write as if you're having a conversation with somebody, but as if you're having a conversation with one person specifically. Don't try and write while you're having a conversation or as if you're having a conversation with 500 people who all have different viewpoints because you will get lost, you will get muddled. If I'm trying to consider this person's viewpoint and this and this and this, oh, and what about if this person thinks this? it's going to be a disaster. It's not going to be clear enough, nobody's going to read it and your brain may explode. So it's a good idea to just write for one person, a one person conversation. Now, you don't have to do this, but I promise you, it's gonna make your life an awful lot easier. And tip three is also about being specific. Don't go ahead and try to write the definitive guide to everything all the time. Definitive guides are great, and you want some pillar articles that are gonna hold up, ironically, your website and your blog. But you don't want to be there trying to write the definitive guide on hats every single time, because it's going to take you Forever. You don't need 10,000 words on hats each time, but I can write one article about this hat that's going to be much smaller, much more digestible, and a lot easier for people to read, and more likely for you to create an awful lot, an awful lot of content, rather than just one article every two years because you're so bogged down. That's it, that's for you bloggers. Moving on. The final tip sounds big, sounds huge, and sounds like something that maybe you are going to struggle with, but don't worry, you don't have to. Number seven is all about your website's theme. So what we want to do here is make sure that you have the right theme. And you kind of want to make sure you have that from the very beginning. If you have to get a year down the line of your website and then start changing your theme, that is going to have a huge impact on everything because that's what themes do. They define how our website looks overall. And if you have to keep changing that, you are changing every single element of your website. And I promise you, that will create problems for you where things just don't format and just don't work. 
What you want is a great theme from the beginning. So take your time choosing and make sure it's one that suits you. Now, the best way to do this is to have a personalized, customized theme that is for you. And that sounds like an awful lot of work. It may sound like you even need some coding, which you do not. You can actually get a completely custom theme in just a minute. That's right, 60 seconds. The way we, could, bleh, the way we are going to do that, try that again. The way we are going to do that is with SeedProd. SeedProd's AI theme generator is going to help us develop a theme specifically for our blog, brand, website, company, anything at all, and it can do it in under a minute. If you want to know how to do that, all you have to do is click this video right here.